All right, I'm here today with a friend of mine, uh, David. He's in the surveying industry, and we're going to talk about uh, making a uh, uh, just a survey map of a piece of property. And uh, I think mainly we want to explain to people that simply flying uh, a drone over a piece of property uh, doesn't make for an accurate, usable map that a surveying company would, would be able to use. So a couple of things I wanted to ask you about is one, GPS and how it relates to uh, absolute uh, accuracy. When, when we're going to make a, a, a map that covers just a, a basic parcel with boundary lines, uh, how does GPS affect it and what's the purpose? And also, if you would, uh, cover the uh, ground control points for us to kind of explain what the purpose of those is. Sure thing. So um, the reason that we use ground control points is to give a known location for the photo imagery. It's called georeferencing, tying in a latitude, longitude, and altitude uh, geographic information with the photos. Um, so we could take a known location, uh, a control point, and use that to tie in um, the geographic Im information to the imagery. So that way we know over the map from the imagery uh, where any uh, geographic location within that map is. And that's very helpful uh, in terms of improving the accuracy of maps. Right. Um, so we're able to take uh, two uh, points of interest from the map and measure those out. Um, create contours uh, like you would see on traditional maps or a surface to do terrain analysis. The idea is to take a known location, uh, ground control point, and then we'll actually use uh, aerial targets. And if we're actually um, getting those aerial targets um, into the imagery of the map, we're actually able to tie those all together and now we'll have a way better um, survey map of our uh, point of interest or property of interest, whatever mm -hmm. we'll be shooting. How, how would it work if I come to you and I say, hey, I have this uh, drone service uh, I can supply you with and if so anytime you need a map, you, you don't want to contract me, I'll go fly my drone. Can yeah, you yeah. just real quick kind of walk us through uh, what you would suggest somebody like me would be would do just to walk out here? Should I just get a Garmin and you know, get some points, or should I use data that you guys already have? I would recommend um, us setting up a control network for you, and then you could uh, use the points that we give you. So for your ground control, we could give you a very accurate location for that. And we could also give you aerial targets shot in with GPS. And what you could do with those is once you start, uh, process your map out, you can tie in to all those points that we give you, all those known locations. So we'll give you points on the ground, and then you will know absolutely that those points uh, correlate to um, your map, uh, to the features on your map. Okay, great. Isn't there a certain tolerance level that you have to be in with, uh, in regards to uh, accuracy when it comes to using a, a, a drone or really anything? Sure. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to be uh, within a tenth of an inch. Depending on the client, they'll usually have different uh, requirements for specification or okay. for tolerances and accuracy. Okay. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually a point that I've, I've had a lot of people ask me is uh, certain requirements when it comes to, to, doing, to doing a map. But the, the truth of it is it, it really depends on the company that is hiring you to, to create your map, right? So everybody has different uh, specifications that they want, and I think the th the thing to remember is that uh, you can always go to the the company that wants to hire you or that you're trying to sell a job to, and ask them, you know, what exactly do you need? What file type do you need this this map to be in? Right. With all that said, let's go fly. Let's go do it. <laughs>